Guys, it's Axel, and now I'm here with Chris. So, Chris, introduce yourself. Tell people who you are and what do you do. What's up, guys? I'm Chris Barnard uh, at Strength Camp. Um, COO, if you will, or the head coach, some of you guys refer to me as. Uh, also, owner of Overtime Athletes. Um, that's pretty much it. So, uh, tell me, uh, what, are, what is Overtime Athletes and... Um, how did you create it? <clears throat> Overtime Athletes was the, the business that I started in college, actually. Um, I linked up with Elliot, and I remember him training me uh, before I went to college, and I was wondering, you know, what is that you, you do online all the time um, as far as, you know, he was always creating products and stuff like that. So when I went to college and I had downtime, I, I, had, I wanted to start my own business. I wanted to, you know, train kids. I was always a trainer, but... Uh, but I didn't really like train. I always was training like, uh, no offense, but I was training a lot of housewives at like LA Fitness, and I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to start training athletes. That's really my passion, and um, and so I started this company online. Or I came out with a product, um, and I started helping athletes uh, on the internet, uh, getting bigger, stronger, faster um, for their sports. And that's really how that came about. So, uh, of course, you have to have some knowledge to do that, right? A little bit, a little bit. That's what I went to school for. Uh, yeah. I got my degree at University of Miami in uh, exercise physiology. And then, um, and then I also learned under a lot of different coaches, if you will. Um, Elliot, obviously, being one of them. Uh, I studied out in Arizona. Um, I studied from a couple different bigger name coaches, if you will. A little bit, guys a little bit older than I was. A little bit ahead of the game, if you will. Right. So, so um, if you look back, what do you think is the best experience you had, like, to getting your own knowledge? To getting my own knowledge is yeah, actually well, doing it. Doing it. Doing it, yeah. So I went to college, and, and I enjoyed college. But the thing was, was I actually went, uh, believe it or not, I went pre-med in college. So a lot of the stuff that I was, I was learning was, uh, you know, very, like, concepts that, you just don't use out here, you know. I, I appreciate me having that background, but, uh, you know, in anatomy class, we're opening cadavers. In, in systemic physiology, we're learning about, you know, deep processes within your physiology. So a lot of that I, didn't, I don't have to use now. I can pull from it, but most of the stuff I studied was, or most of the stuff that I apply today is going to be the stuff that I learned with actual coaches that I worked with. You know, and I, I love putting myself through it. Um, if I wanted to teach something like speed or power jumping or strength or whatever it may be, um, I felt like I always needed to do it myself instead of just being somebody who read something in a book. So, uh, so I had this big passion in, um, in, in, in college, throughout high school, to really study from the greats, really study from the people who I thought like had something that I didn't, and then I had to become that to actually teach it to somebody, you know. And that's kind of the 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 mindset of mastery, if you will. Like I don't really like to teach or touch on too many things if it's out of my scope. If I really haven't gone through it or experienced it, um, as I see it, I think doesn't that experience that you gain during the anatomy classes and stuff like that didn't, doesn't that help? You to understand how the human body moves. Absolutely, and, absolutely. Right? I can't take away from that. Don't get me wrong, but my general studies cover just enough. When I say I went deep, like, uh, you know, it, it, it's good to know the muscles. It's yeah. good to know how the body functions. It's good to know biomechanics. It's good to know all the things that I was learning. But what I'm referring to is the is the deeper concepts that really you're only going to get if you're going to be a medical student or try to be a doctor, um, some kind of surgeon or something like that. I think. Almost 90% of the people who were in my actual study course were actually became physical therapists or actual doctors. So, uh, so that just kind of gives you a heads up of what route most of those people in that particular department were going. Right. Talking about all those coaches that you've worked with and learned from, who do you think uh, has influenced you most? Oh, by far, Elliot. I mean, my story with Elliot dates back, uh, you know, I, I had a idea of lifting but I think what was so good is Elliot was a just a couple years older than me and he still was 
training very intense. Whereas other people I coached, they knew their stuff and they coached a lot. I've been coached with guys who work with pro athletes. But the one thing that um, that was really good for me was, and, and it was really good, it was kind of a match made, uh, for lack of a better word, in heaven because Ellie was training strongman. And I was this hungry kid coming off of junior junior college football. And, like, every single workout, like, he was, he just knew, he knew me because he saw a lot of himself, like, like how he trains in the intensity. And I was able to get that, he was able to bring that fire out of me every single time. And really, here's the thing, like, as far as training and coaching, like, there's, there's nothing you don't know. Like, you can't look up at your fingertips. Um, you could pull up anything you want on Google. You could pull up the best workout in the world for whatever sport it is you play or whatever you whatever you want to do. But the difference between that is the environment you train in and the intensity you train in that right. you could get from your coach. So the one thing that I learned, um, and, and, and really like as you see me when I coach, is one thing I really like to do is try to get in somebody's ear, try to get in somebody's head, feel them out. Um, and, and really try to push them to that next level. Because you could take one movement, right, whatever, squats, let's just say, for instance, and uh, it could be the most intense exercise you've ever done for that day, or it could be something easy. And you guys know, uh, depending on how heavy you go or how intense you go and how you rise to that level day in and day out. And that's what I experienced from, uh, from, from, from Elliot, you know, and it was just a, it was a different style. Uh, I had this burning passion to to compete at the highest level I knew exactly what school I wanted to go to I knew exactly what position I wanted to play um, I mean Miami's a private school I had everything stacked up against me you know I didn't know how I was going to get in whatever but I just knew this is exactly what I was doing and um, and through that training I think day in and day out working that hard it kept aligning itself with with the other stuff meaning like you know, putting in the paperwork, but doing everything, the steps that I had to take. It wasn't just training and I'm shooting in the dark, oh, I want to go play football. It was, I was very meticulous for that full year and a half because I was coming off of rehab for my shoulder. And everything I did for that year and a half just was a progression. And, uh, and, and that to me was one of the biggest experiences of my life as far as with a coach. Um, because it was one-on-one, -on -one. you know, I've had football coaches and other sport coaches, but, uh, it was just one of those where uh, where I always remember that, and I always try to give that back to somebody else, you know, to pay it forward to one of these kids that come in here. You, I've been working with you for a little bit, but I always want to be able to to uh, have somebody experience that as well, because the training aspect of it should never hold somebody back. Does that make sense? You know, if it's if it's some kind of genetics or something with that, or if it's some kind of thing that's out of your hands, but if it's in your hands, if the goal is in your hands, if the dream's in your hands, there should be no reason why that person can't obtain it. You know, and sometimes it takes a little spark from somebody to show right. them that you can get that. You know what I mean? Right. So, so you mentioned uh, you trained with football coaches and then you're trained with Elliot. Mm -hmm. um, what else, you know, because there are a lot of athletes that come in, baseball players, swimmers, football players, uh, you know, all board, you know, what is your background in sports? What sports uh, have you done? And uh, To be you know? honest with you, I've played basically everything. And I'm not saying that like, uh, like I'm not bragging, but I've just, I've had a background in everything. Um, at a high level football. But I remember in like from 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, I mean, I, I uh, basketball, baseball, football, um, I boxed. Um, I, I, I tried basically everything because I was kind of a jack of all trades when it came to that. And I kind of, my athleticism was able to take over. Um, and, and just being, just being pretty good at, at most of the sports helped. As I wrote, as I, um, got older, I had this mindset that I wanted to play football. So I had to cut off all the other sports. So I cut off things like baseball, which I played at a high level, um, basketball, I kind of cut off track. These are things that I thought like would take away from me practicing my craft of football. Um, and that's kind of where my specialty became. But then when I realized that I can apply a lot of the same principles 
two different sports, that's when I started working with swimmers. You know, I uh, two, three years ago, I started taking on my first swimmers, and, and man, these kids became elite. You know what I mean? They, they, I, I want to say every single swimmer I worked with went and got a scholarship in, in swimming. Yeah. yeah, so you're talking close to 11 swimmers, and every single one of them is, is swimming at a collegiate level. That's like, you know, and, and not small time. I mean, this is UF, University of Florida. Uh, there's been Cincinnati, um, Nova Southeastern, Amherst. There's, there's bigger schools, you know. But I was able to apply the same principles um, to training football. Now, this doesn't mean the same movements, but it means the same principles because they're all power athletes. Right. And you're trying to get the most twitch, the most punch out of them. Um, and, and through that, I was able to break down the movements of any other sport and then train them in you know, a similar way. And I'm the type of coach, like, uh, if I, like, for swim, I, you know, I know what a swimmer looks like, but I have to go watch this athlete move. I want to go see what they do in their craft uh, or in their sport or in their competition to see how what it is that they're doing. Because then in my, in my mind, I'm like, I'm able to see not just what movements they do if they're swimming, but I'm also able to see, hey, this person is, a, a little bit weak, he, you know what I mean? I can see that his stroke is a little bit yeah. uh, weak, you know, and then I'm able to go ahead and manipulate it in here, if you will. And that's really how I break down those athletes. I see. So uh, next thing is, like, there are a lot of spectrum of athletes that come around here. And uh, one thing that comes in my mind when you talk about, you know, being training with Elliot and have that spark, it's about also mental, mm -hmm. like a mental toughness and stuff like that. And uh, one athlete pops in my head is like Kobe Bryant he's mm -hmm. always like had this mental toughness so what type of athletes you want to train and you do train over here well I'm very selective like I'm very selective uh <clears throat> I don't I test a lot of athletes what happened when you first came in I didn't really give you too much time a day right yeah. I wanted to see what kind of athlete you were I wanted to see how you work how you operate because I've known for a long time, like I've had really good friends who wipe me off the floor when it comes to athleticism capability, but I, I knew they couldn't compete when it came to mindset because I'm going to put in that work, right. you know? And so when I was able to see that being an athlete myself, I was able to choose what kind of athletes I want to work with. And, uh, and I can tell right off bat, by an athlete almost coming in for a session or two, uh, how they conduct themselves, um, and, and really, you know, what kind of athlete if, are they going to help themselves out? Because in, in, in anything, it comes down to you. I could give you the best program in the world, and you could follow it 50%, and you're going to get 50% results. Or I can give you the shittiest workout in the world, but if you follow 100% intensity with everything that you have, day in and day out, you're going to get way better results than the best program. Right. So really, uh, that, the reason why I was trying to explain with Elliot is I, I almost feel like I got a degree in Miami, but through strength camp, I got a degree in psychology when it came to athletes. Because right. I'm able to see what makes them tick, and I'm able to see which ones I want to pick and choose to work with. And it's not because I don't think, hey, you're not going to go anywhere. I take kids all the, all the time. I took basketball players who picked up a basketball in ninth grade. But I remember this kid, his name is Kyle. But I remember seeing him come in, I gave him a dribbling program, and he dribbled every single day before he came and trained. So I knew, I was like, okay, I'm going to work with him. Even when all the other athletes left, it was just me and him, it was football season. I worked with him and worked with him, and he got a college scholarship because I knew he was going to put in the work day in and day out. And that's all that matters to me. You know, at the end of the day, do you want it or do you not? If you don't really want it, it's going to show and you're wasting my time and I really don't want to, I really don't care to work with you. Yeah, I think it's a lot about, you know, details, mm -hmm. how you put it in because, you know, and also it comes to details and then being very precise in the program and put it all in. And yeah. uh, I remember one of the first things you said to me was uh, work like a cat, you know, Go all out and then just rest. Yeah. Yeah, right? That, that was one of the first things that I still remember that. <laughs> Sometimes I regret that I'm not doing it because I, I might go like four workouts a day. And yeah. Like, <laughs> like, for example, Monday I went, like, the last workout was at 9, nine yeah. o'clock. But what would be it that the advice for somebody to go hard at, at their craft and, you know, and 
you know, maybe they have to study the tape or maybe they have to, you know, uh, do something else. Like, like two tips. So, I, so this is my biggest thing, and I'm really big goal-oriented. And my, my biggest thing for goals, and I've always played by this because this is what I did for through Miami, is you need to create a goal ladder. And essentially what a goal ladder is is uh, I need you basically take a piece of paper and draw a ladder. You know, you know what a ladder looks like. Yeah. You draw two lines and you draw a bunch of steps, right? And, and all you do is place that main top goal. I don't care how big it is. You can dream as big as you want to, but put that biggest goal in, right there that you know you want to obtain at the very top. And from there, what you do is each ladder, you work your way backwards through everything you have to do until you get to where you're at right now. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So essentially, you know, whatever it is that you want, you, you know, say for you, uh, for instance, uh, your goal is to, to compete for your country, right. you know, at the highest level. So from there, you start working backwards. What do I need to do to get to the Olympics? I need to qualify here. Boom, that's there. That's the next step before the Olympics, right? So then what do you need to do before you qualify? You need to reach this amount of time. So what is that? Where am I at? And what do I need to do to get there? Right. You sought coaching. This is what you needed to do. You get what I'm saying? You keep working until you get to that point where you're right where it is. And what this allows you to do, um, it's not so much, it can act as a guide, if you will, as you look, you know, check off each step. But in the same sense, it gives you mental clarity of how you can travel that path to get to that goal. Right. You get what I'm saying? Not a lot of people, people just put this goal out there and they just think, oh, I'm going to go do this, this, and this. And, and then they, they achieve exactly, it. Exactly, like... they don't achieve it. But, and then a lot of them get stuck in like, okay, I got to go work out and I have to go make sure I eat good every day. You know what I mean? Like these are the little things. That's good. You have to stay in the moment and, and, and knock those out day in and day out. But in the same sense, you have to have a plan as far as the steps you're taking progressively to get there. Because um, everybody meal plans, everybody trains, everybody does this. What's the difference between your goal and anybody else's and how you're going to achieve it? That's really big, I think. That's my biggest tip, if you will. Okay. So let's talk about American sports, right? Because you've been around sports, mm -hmm. as you talk about. Uh, what do you think American athletes, American sports teams are so dominant in so many sports? And, you know, you can name only a few of sports that Americans aren't. Dominant, for example, like I don't know, kayaking or something like that. Yeah. Right. Why do you think Americans are so dominant in so many s sports? Well, I mean, it's a loaded question, but if you really want to look into it, maybe you know, we, maybe their the uh, training techniques or something like that. It has nothing to do with training, because I can tell you like this: the Chinese, the Russians, they train and they've been into onto the training a lot more. America is is was one of the wealthiest countries for a long time. You know, it's still. It, goes back and forth still is uh but uh one of the things that uh, when i say rich and wealthy you know i'm talking money but i'm also talking opportunity right and uh and for the longest time um uh america provided those kind of opportunities and we also entertained ourselves with it and paid for that not to say you guys don't but uh, I, I, there's just a sense of, uh, you know, as a young age, that's all you dream for. That's all you know. You have that sort of urgency all the you time. You have an urgency all the time. I mean, I grew up middle class, and I had this huge urgency just to play. Because they're, not only are they put on a pedestal as far as fame and all that, it's money as well. You know what I mean? So, as a young adolescence you don't really know too much in life but you know you have to work right you know you have to but you love sports so you know you continue to try to do the things you love and it's kind of elevated everything so people around you are competing in the same sports so you you can start to pin yourselves against another person for instance football in South Florida uh, South Florida has the most amount of draft picks into the NFL more than any other county or state or whatever you want to you know uh, south of Broward County, if you will, or uh, Palm Beach County, right. right? They just have amazing amount of draft picks into the NFL or players in the NFL. Um, but at a young age, that's what all your all your people are doing. You know what I mean? That's what all your peers are doing. They're playing football, and really quickly, you're able to know where you're at in that totem pole. And then as you keep elevating, it's, it allows you to kind of, uh, you know, differentiate yourself and, and compete at the highest levels. 
Um, there's so many different aspects to look at why um, America could, would, you, would you say dominate? I mean, there's there's a lot of different things, but at the same time, I just think the opportunity and the level that we hold our standard or, or the level that the athletes are at uh, as far as um, you know the, the position of power they're in when they reach the highest level, it's something that everybody chases in this right. country. A lot of people chase. You know, we're, now we're in this technology era, so a lot of these kids they don't ha they don't need. That's not their only outlet to be millionaires anymore. You know, you could become a millionaire at your fingertips now. So it's changing rapidly, and that's why you see uh, things, you know, building up all around the world as far as different pr professions. But in the beginning, America was a huge land of opportunity when it came to sports. Huge. So. Okay, so we talk about other people like Americans and holy. So, what do you think is your biggest achievement? My biggest achievement. It could be spiritual achievement. It could be a mental thing. It could be a physical thing. Anything. Huh. Um. I wasn't ready for that. I want to do this question justice. <laughs> Um, I, I feel like I've achieved some things in each realm, um, uh, in what you refer to as spiritual, you know, physical, or materialistic, if you will. Yeah. Um, but I think, let me think, you have to cut the tape now. <laughs> no, 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 you're good, you're good, I'm playing with you. Um. One of my biggest achievements was honestly was setting setting goals and being able to fulfill them. And let me get into this because this is very general. But from a young age, I, I mentioned earlier about the goal stuff. But one thing that I've I've felt like I've been able to do is kind of process something in my mind and go after it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I knew at a young age I wanted to work with people as far as coaching, but I didn't want to be I didn't want to be held back from. Uh, the personal training career, meaning personal training money. You know what I mean? I, I also wanted to be successful and successful in the standards of, of money because I want you, let's face it, money in this world gets you things. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make you happy, but why settle for mediocrity? If it's out there, why not try to get more? You get what I'm saying? Right. So I was able to achieve being in the coaching realm, but still not have a ceiling above me. Does that make sense? So I didn't have this ceiling saying, oh, you can only make this far. 30000 a year. You can only get this far. I'm in a position now where I've put myself here and I've literally went through this process in my mind of this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure it out and I'm not going to have a ceiling. If I want to make a billion dollars, I'll find a way to do it in this realm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just how I believe in it. Uh, and it started at a young age and I've always been a little bit different. I've never settled. I've never settled for anything. And when anything comes, like I feel like I'm settling, life changes it up for me, you know. Um, but, uh, but you know, going through the process of, my, of, of, of putting a goal in front of me and achieving it or giving my all and learning that experience through it has been, been one of my biggest achievements. It's not so much about, for me, and, and this is cliche, but it's not so much for me about that actual tangible thing that I'm getting at the end of the tunnel. Right. right? It, the achievement has been the process the that I've gone through. Sort of exactly. I mean, a lot of people are saying that now, but it really, <laughs> I'm able to reflect back and see that, right. though. I'm able to go back and say, look, like, you put a goal to play at University of Miami. Look at the process you went through and look what kind of man you became. Does it's that not only, sense? like, from here to there. Like, exactly. Like, like it's what's going on between that. Exactly. Everybody wants to look at it very, achievement is looked at very linear. And I think that the each person has their own process and their own things that they went through at that particular time. And the way I see myself going through things and the things I've had to get myself out of or into to be able to achieve those, I'm so proud of, uh, I'm able to pat myself on the back for that. And especially owning the business of where I'm at today. Um, uh, I've been able, I, I've always been a hard worker, but even being able to excel my work ethic is a huge achievement for me. You know what I mean? Uh, being able to work with guys like you is a huge achievement for me. You came from Latvia. Because what? Because you saw something I said online yeah. about getting faster. That's a huge achievement. Um, so there's there's little ones in everyone, but I think that being able to put my pos myself in the position 
to help the people that, that I'm helping is is amazing to me. And I, I, I really, uh, I'm, I'm so fortunate, I'm so grateful and humbled to be able to do that. Okay. So, uh, now, do you want to say any, like, last wishes or something like that? So, last wishes. Last wishes? Like, Damn, bro. Not, okay, not, not like that. Like, <laughs> like, like a good Guys, wish. You don't see me anymore. No, uh, no. Uh, like, like, good wishes. Like, like, you know, good wishes. Hey, I wish you the best, man. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate okay. it. I'll see you guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>